Uh, first case is an eight-year-old male, status post fall off a hoverboard with a right bone form fracture. His nerve acid intact, close reduced in place to make sure you explain. Next case, a uh, 15 year old male status post fall on outstretched arm while wrestling with the left simple posterior lateral elbow dislocation. He's closed reduced and placed into a posterior splint. It did. He was stable post reduction to just shy of full extension. And how are you going to treat? Uh, we'll treat him non operatively. Um, we'd like to keep him immobilized for about a week. Uh, and then start early mobilization to prevent prevent uh, stiffness. Next is an 11 year old male status post fall while playing soccer with a closed right tibial shaft fracture. He was neurovascularly intact, placed into a long leg cast and bivalve. Next one is a 14 year old male status post fall while playing basketball, with a closed right distal third tibial shaft fracture. He was neurovascularly intact. Close reduced and placed in a bivalve long leg cast. Except for reduction? Yeah, it's close. Um, he, he does have a little valgus um, in the distal third, but um, the cortexes are. Oh, cortex little valgus. It's fine. Number, right? Yeah, it's less than 10 degrees. Um, acceptable is you know, within five to 10 degrees. Um, so the this decision was made to try not up. Which way is that going to drift? More varus, uh, less valgus. It's going to drift into valgus. The fibula is fractured as well. All these can tend to fall into reeker bottom too. You already see the fibula is not at length. It's already in valgus, and I don't think it's actually 10 degrees is no longer acceptable. It's five degrees in the chromal plane. It sure. never has been 10 degrees. Understood. Okay, it's maybe 10 degrees in the sagittal plane. But that's come down now. These people end up being a, with long term with malalignment of the distal tibia, you know, tail fibular joint and the tibia tailor joint. So, uh, you know, that's marginal at best. Yeah, yeah. We had initially discussed surgical management, given that he's uh, spices are, are pretty closed here. Um, but it was the decision of the family and intending to try not not management. Certainly, we'll follow well, there's other options. Is there other non-operative choices? Um, besides a cast? Besides your cast, right? Yeah, this was reduced, right? Yeah, this was the second reduction attempt. Um, it was a it was a difficult reduction in the casting. He was consciously sedated, and you know, it was at a point where I called the attending after my second effort, and uh, he said it was acceptable enough to send out the follow-up. Yeah, you could you could wedge the cast certainly um, when it follows up uh, to, pro, to further prevent the valgus deformity. But... This is a 46 year old female that is supposed to fall on the forearm uh, with the right non displaced ulnar fracture. She was nervous and intact and placed into a sugar tongue splint. So, a 37 year old male that is supposed to fall with the right. Index finger, uh, tough fracture and laceration. His nerve actually intact. Um, there was a nail bed laceration that was repaired. Um, and there was a little piece of the distal fragment that was excised and he was buddy taped, sent out. It's a 41 year old female status post bite by her cousin. Uh, it's a open right index finger. Uh, P3 fracture of note, she came in, was under arrest and under the influence, significant psych history, um, was given unison and tetanus, um, and we actually kept her uh, for a couple of days for IBM. Patient zero, patient zero, zombie outbreak. <laughs> <laughs> under the influence of being a zombie. Um, she was... Uh, uh, revision amp, uh, nail bed repair, and uh, was just recently discharged to jail. <laughs> uh, this is a 47 hey, uh, Ryan, I'm going to be out of town next week. Do you mind following up on her for me? We appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a 47 year old female, so that's supposed to fall with the left long finger, um, of the middle phalanx. Uh, 
which was reduced and placed into an extension blocking splint. It was a 50 year old male status post fight with a left long finger PIP dislocation status post intoxicated fight. Uh, he was closed reduced and was stable after reduction, but he taped. This is an 83 year old female status post trip and fall on a rug with a left open great toe distal phalanx fracture. He was neurovascularly intact. There was a laceration right over the nail. Um, nail was taken off and now did a repair and placed into a uh, posterior splint. Is there a particular organism that you worry about with a fight bite as opposed to the typical staph and strep? Yeah, so most are polymicrobial. You're worried about like Iganella um, is one that comes up. What kind of organism is Iconella? It's a gram negative. Gram negative what? Rod. It's good. <laughs> yeah, the, those bite wounds can be super nasty. <laughs> Human bites are the worst. Cat bites are second. Good morning. First patient is a five-year-old female. Again, after a fall, the left uh, tattoo is a left image fracture. The patient was uh, splinted. Um, and uh, initially, the plan was uh, to take the patient for uh, operative fixation. Um, after review of the imaging uh, with the attending physician at the time, uh, the one was uh, deemed to be acceptable and uh, will attempt non-operative management at this time. How would you pin that, Dan? Um, so, uh, if we were to pursue operative fixation, we do a three pin uh, from lateral to medial uh, that are diverging after uh, close reduction. Our next patient is a 14 year old male, status post fall, right dislocation, forearm fracture, close reduced to some pressure. Next patient is a 58 year old male, uh, fell from a stationary motorcycle, uh, presented with a left inner shaft fracture. The uh, radial nerve was intact, uh, pre and post reduction, patient placed in cavitation splint. Uh, next patient is a 66 year old female, uh, presented after a fall with a left, uh, <clears throat> left radial neck fracture and elbow dislocation. Of note, uh, the patient was seen at an outside institution. Uh, the patient was usually uh, closed, reduced, and splinted. And the patient presented uh, to the office about 11 days afterwards. And uh, these are the films that were obtained at the time. The patient was dislocated for an unknown period of time after the initial closed reduction. The uh, patient was then taken to the operating room for a radiohead arthroplasty, uh, internal joint stabilizer replacement, and uh, LUCL repair. Did you repair the ligament and then check stability, or just go straight to that internal external fixator? Um, so, so going into it, we had planned to go ahead with the internal uh, fixator, um, regardless of the stability after fixation of the LUCL. Uh, the patient was pretty unreliable. She had been dislocated for quite uh, for an unknown amount of time, um, and uh, we felt that it, it, we would have better uh, stability even with the repair uh, by just placing the internal joint stabilizer. So remember, we we checked stability. We checked how easy it was to get a reduction prior to uh, you know making an incision, and, and it was stuck. So um, you know, concerned with an unreliable patient who had who had no idea what was going on. Um, you know, I, I didn't really think too much about uh, doing this versus not. Excellent choice. What do you think about your medial collateral ligament? Um, so the medial collateral ligaments were also likely disrupted just based on the uh, dislocation pattern, posterior medial, posterior medial dislocation. Um, uh, but it, it was stabilized with the, the you know, LUCL repair and the internal joint stabilizer. Uh, so it, it would likely heal or at least uh, provide some, uh, it would scar down and uh, provide some. Thank you.
morning, everyone. First, we have an 11 year old female, the first fall, traveling uh, with the right a couple of elder dislocation, she had neither a carnal avulsion, she was closed reduced, listened to a posterior slint. Uh, and uh, at, the time, at the time, the closed direction was stable uh, through the full or entire range of motion, flexion, and section, as well as coordination, as you mentioned about it, block. There's no carburetion of that fragment. And, uh, with your splint, she'll follow from the office. Next is a right hand down with a 14-year-old male, that's his fall from his bicycle. Uh, his left somewhere is due to some radius fracture. His clothes are used, plus his shirt is on a splint, will follow from the office as well. Next is a right hand dominant 11 year old female, uh, assessed was uh, an injury while playing on a trampoline uh, with his right index finger, he breathes on her seat fracture. She was uh, close reduced. Uh, the nail that was checked, there was a uh, small injury uh, that didn't require repair. And uh, she was placed into a flexion blocking splint. She'll follow up in the office and she's also sent home with that on that. So, okay. Next is a 74 year old male. Yo, Omar, what do, you, what do you worry about getting caught in that fracture site? I know so the, the, the general matrix uh, can get caught in there, but I had a good state of reduction. I didn't think there was, was any there. Was the nail plate on or off? Uh, the nail plate was off um, approximately. So it was essentially the, the test of case and then the amount of finger deformity with, um, with the nail plate approximately sticking above the, um, the fold. Did you treat this with antibiotics? Yes, definitely. Is there an eponym if the nail bed is, if the nail bed is caught in that fracture site? Uh, yes, yeah, Seymour. Next is a 74 year old male. That's just down on the fall. It's left the lecronon fracture. Uh, this patient elected non operative management. Uh, this patient significant uh, comorbidities. Uh, he had a, with, this, with this fracture, that subdural hematoma. He's aphid. He's uh, on alcohol for that. He has diabetes. He's a heavy alcoholic and um, uh, he's a pacemaker as well. Given the comorbidities, uh, I can also say those showing that. Other patients with these displays, uh, like an fracture, can tend to do well, just as well. Uh, patients without it, with, without the added operative complications, we have different non operative management. Finally, we have a right hand dominant 33 year old female, Sassos of Salt, a few weeks ago by her husband. She had this right over shaft fracture approximately. She closed it for short time slint, and then we elected to perform. Open reduction and total fixation of that on the fracture. Thank you. The morning first patient is a 35 year old female um, involved in a trauma NBC who had the C2 um, uh, extension teardrop fracture at the andro inferior aspect of uh, C2. Um, she was initially innovated for combativeness in the trauma bay. She also had a pneumothorax and rib fractures. Um, she went, underwent MRI, um, which just showed a significant pre-vertebral pre -vertebral edema, um, likely ALL injury, um, and the anterior inferior um, uh, Avulsion fracture. Uh, we opted for non surgical management. She remains in an Aspen and she is still innovated. So she's pending a neurologic exam. Did they know the fracture prior um, to I do not believe so. She was in, in, innovated initially before she underwent any of her CT scans, uh, but she wasn't a, she was a caller on arrival. Our next patient is a 15 year old male who fell and sustained this right distal radius fracture, and he was closed, reduced, and placed into a sugar tongue splint. Next patient is a 12 year old male who fell as well and had a distal both bone forearm fracture, who was also closed, reduced, and placed into a sugar tongue splint. Next patient is a nine year old female um, who fell and had a left simple elbow dislocation. She was uh, closed, reduced, and placed into a posterior splint with, um, uh, she was fully stable throughout range of motion, 
um, and she um, was splinted. Next patient is a 30 year old female who is a trauma MVC who had a left simple elbow dislocation, posterior lateral, who was closed reduced and placed into a posterior splint and was also stable throughout range of motion. She had a comorbidity. The, 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 no, she did not. She's young and healthy. Uh, next patient is a 31 year old male who uh, dropped a cement block on his foot um, at work and had a right foot open uh, second PIP dislocation as well as uh, proximal phalanx of the third and fourth digits um, fractured. He was uh, irrigated um, in the ED given tetanus and ANSEF um, and his toe was reduced um, and his lack was repaired and he was uh, splinted and uh, sent home on antibiotics. Um, finally, as a 40-year-old male who fell and sustained this right Weber B ankle fracture, who was placed into a um, short AO splint. Morning. First patient, a 28 year old male who fell off a dirt bike with a right AC separation. Uh, it was reducible. Um, and of note, the next day I chest x ray that showed it was actually better reduced. Uh, There's a 93 year old male, SAS post fall with a left scapula uh, body fracture, a T4 to 5 compression fractures, and a bunch of transverse process fractures. Mm -hmm. He underwent a trauma scan. It's also found to have rib fractures with the pneumothorax. He was treated non-operatively with a sling. He had no back pain. This is a 79-year-old male who fell in the bathroom and had a very strange direct lateral uh, elbow dislocation uh, that was rotated 90 degrees. Uh, he it was a simple dislocation. He was, it was a closed injury, neuro intact. Uh, he was closed reduced and placed into a posterior splint. He had laxity to valgus, but uh, had, was stable with flexion extension. This is a 68 year old female, sat with fall with a left distal radius fracture. She was, I'm uh, sorry, this is already shown. There's a 42 year old male, sat with fall from the motorcycle, left to radius fracture, uh, who is closed reduced and placed into a sugar tongue splint. There's a 43 year old female who is in the MVC, and sustained this uh, right ulnar shaft fracture, as well as a right acetabulum fracture that was transverse. She was taken for a right ulnar shaft ORIF, as well as uh, a right acetabulum ORIF. Why do you, why only um, two screws proximal to the fracture? Uh, so interoperatively, uh, it was felt that that screw, uh, the third from the most proximal had enough of a bite in the proximal segment that it was acceptable. The screw that's going through the fracture site? Yeah, I think uh, <clears throat> ideally there would be one more screw approximately. And Todd, are you using two seven or three five screws on the ulna? Two seven. I think it's fine. You match the plate to the bone. Uh, the three five plate would be monstrous on that lady. Way too, way too big. I think yeah. You know, I think with a good lag screw through the plate, uh, you know, you don't need that screw. It just but whatever. Yes, yes, I. He's probably.
This is a 72-year-old male, status post syncopal fall with a right hip, uh, paraprosthetic, rear trope fracture. It's non-displaced. Uh, CAT scan was ordered by the primary team uh, showing a stable fracture pattern with a well-fixed stem. He's treated uh, non-operatively with protective weight bearing. This is an 89-year-old female status post fall with a left basi cervical femoral neck fracture. Uh, we opted to treat this with a cemented hemi. You chose that for? So hemi versus intermedullary nail, which we were considering. We felt that this, although by the lesser troke was basi cervical that extended into the neck more superiorly, and looking at her x-rays felt that her bone quality would, she would benefit from having a cemented hemi versus uncemented. This is a 97 year old female status fall with a right femoral neck fracture. Uh, she also underwent a right cemented hemi. Todd, with the case before, did you end up using a larger neck to make up for the loss of the, the cow car there? Uh, no. We just cemented it a little proud. It's just a plus zero neck. Leg length, sir. She might be a touch short on that side. Better than long. Uh, this is a nine-year-old female status fall with a left hip intertroke fracture. She was taken for a left hip intermedullary nail. This is a 65 year old female status fall with a right ankle trimalleolar fracture. <clears throat> was taken for a right ankle ORIF. Uh, this patient uh, is a diabetic. They're neuropathic or they're diabetic? Not neuropathic. How big was that posterior mal? I couldn't really see it. Uh, it, was, it was less than 10%. <coughs> the <articulate> surface. <coughs> yes, yeah, so, so we uh, did a K-wire anteriorly and then uh, dropped the screw in from posterior. Now, what's, what's the rule of diabetes? More fixation is better. You got it every time. Thank you. We have a 63 year old female who fell down two stairs, had a right non displaced medial tibial plateau fracture. Uh, got a CT just to confirm. Just some slight depression. Side. <laughs> ABIs were negative, just some medial joint line tenor. Uh, she was placed, placed in slides, side slabs. Uh, and we'll follow up outpatient. Next is a 10 year old male who fell while playing basketball, uh, has a right distal, both bone forearm fracture, was transferred in, was closed reduced, we'll follow up in the office. Next is a nine year old female, fell off her bike, landed on her left arm. So the left distal radius fracture was closed, reduced, put in a sugar tongue, and we'll also follow the outpatient. Then 89-year-old female who fell while in the hospital, landed on her left shoulder, has a distal clavicle fracture, uh, was given a sling to follow the outpatient. This is a 50-year-old male that was in a motorcycle accident, um, has a history of an old clavicle fracture on the same side, uh, complaining of some right shoulder pain. Uh, refractured his clavicle, was given a sling, followed the outpatient. Ten-year-old female fell off a swing, landed on her right arm, has a right distal both bone forearm fracture, was closed, reduced, put in a sugar tongue splint, followed the outpatient. Uh, this is a 79-year-old male that was a trauma transfer. He fell down 13 steps, um, has a subdural hematoma, a bunch of left-sided rib fractures and a chest tube. Uh, for us, he has this kind of interesting pelvic 
fracture, the right pubic rami fracture, and a left iliac wing fracture that extends down into his anterior column, non displaced. Um, he's going to be treated non operatively. He's currently intubated in the ICU. It's just his pelvis, plain film. Uh, this is a 36 year old male, was in a motorcycle accident, uh, some thinning of left shoulder pain, um, has a mid shaft clavicle fracture, was given a sling to follow up. A very low speed accident. He was trying to show off and clip the curb. Um, this is a 12 year old male, was playing with a hoverboard when he lost his footing, landed on his left arm, has a left distal both bone forearm fracture, was closed reduced. Put in a sugar tongue splint to follow up outpatient. The seven year old male who fell playing outside uh, with his friends, he has a landing on his left arm, has a left both bone farm fracture. It's close reduced, put in a sugar tongue splint. Um, this is a 50 year old male that was in a rollover motor vehicle accident, um, had a head lack, head CT was negative. Uh, we were just consulted for an L2 compression fracture. He had a little bit of back pain. Sorry, I don't know why that's stuttering. Um, but otherwise, it was narrow intact. Um, he will follow up in the office this week. Um, this is a 36 year old male who was assaulted. He had initially presented um, the night before. He had a bunch of head locks that were stapled and sutured, but he denied um, getting any other imaging and left uh, kind of AMA before they could do any further workup. He came back the next day because he was still having significant back pain um, as well as some neck pain. He was neurologically intact, was able to walk around, uh, was just having more pain. So he came in to get checked out. He was found to have this T6 uh, teardrop compression fracture as well as a C5, C6 spines process fractures. Um, he again left, uh, refused any further imaging or workup, uh, ripped his C collar off and walked out the door. So he'll follow up in office. We'll offer him. So, yeah. Very nice guy. Who? Um, I was going to see Ryan Coyle as well next week. <laughs> uh, this is a 41 year old male that had a fall at work he landed directly onto a pipe on his left shoulder had a left scapular body fracture uh, he was given a sling and be treated non-operatively um, this is a nine-year-old male who fell while playing baseball with his friends uh, landed right on his left elbow has a type 1 supraconal humerus fracture uh, was put in a long arm cast and bivalved and he'll follow up this week this is a seven-year-old female who fell well at her birthday party playing on a water slide. Um, she has a both bone forearm fracture. She broke the same spot back in February, had a cast taken off in April. Um, she was closed reduced and put in a sugar tongue. Uh, this is an eight-year-old female who fell at home. She was inside playing. She was found to have an open both bone forearm fracture. Uh, the, there was a poke hole over the ulna piece dorsally there. Um, she was taken, she was initially closed reduced in the emergency room, put in a sugar tongue, and I was taken to the OR for a uh, washout and flexi nails. Um, stayed for uh, 24 hours of ANSEF post op. Do you need to take a dorsal fracture? What's the uh, mechanism of the injury there? I'm sorry? With, uh, with the apex dorsal, what's the mechanism of injury? Usually they're, they're volar, so how does it go dorsal? Um, it's usually rotational, right? So it's a pronation injury. Right. Does that type one injury need to go to the operating room? Um, some people would elect to just wash it out in the uh, emergency room, give antibiotics and close reduce it. How long after the injury was were the antibiotics given? Uh, I, one hour, about one hour. And what was the reason for the um, flexi nails? Um, 
the attending elected to them just for more stability. Um, the ulna was pretty, it was like a short oblique. It was kind of hard to maintain the reduction intraoperatively as well. Um, but I think just because we were taking her back for an IMD. So I guess the question is for, for a type one pinhole, is, isn't there enough literature to show that antibiotics given an appropriate time period is all you need for pediatric pinhole openings? So we all know that there is that one study that, that kind of discusses this, uh, but the, that study was a little underpowered and I, I'm not really willing to uh, take the chance on just, uh, you know, letting uh, oral antibiotics, uh, sorry, IV antibiotics and a uh, bedside washout be enough for something like this. This was actually a little bit more than a pinhole. It was about like one centimeter wound. So I definitely felt that this warranted a washout plus vaccine else. I agree 100%. Only, I, I was just going to make one comment and, you know, it looks like those nails are cut very close to the bone, which just makes me wonder how difficult they will be to take out when you come back to do that. I've, I've typically left them longer to just make that second procedure a little bit easier, but there's always that worry about the radial sensory nerve. You either make them too long or too short, so... <laughs> right, splunking is okay. Um, and then finally, 99, or I guess it's not the last one actually. 99 year old female, Bell has a right endotrope, uh, hip fracture, um, and up going, undergoing a right hip uh, dynamic hip screw. Chose that device. Um, she has a very wide pelvis and also the proximal fragment was rotated and the shaft was sitting very posteriorly. Um, so we had a hard time getting the start point for the nail uh, just with where the greater choke was lying and we didn't want to put her into varus. And based on the start points that we were able to achieve, um, it would have been too lateral of a start point. And then we, uh, with the shaft sitting posteriorly in order to get the reduction, um, it was easier, more easily obtained open as well. Um, so then it was uh, elected to just do the dynamic uh, uh, hip screw. And the point being that not every intertrope is easily nailed mm -hmm. and you have to be prepared to have to go to an alternate technique because it's much easier to open this thing up, put an elevator underneath the distal segment, push the shaft right up and, and the, you know, the guide wire for the leg screw goes right in. Exactly. Yeah. So instead of struggling with that start point. Uh, yeah, I mean, they always struggle so long mm -hmm. and then move on. One question, what was the length of your screw that you used? It was a 90. It, it might have been just positional, but, you know, they do have a short barrel as well. When you get too, too close to those threads, you just yes, want to sweetie. make sure you have the ability to compress. This will take. Okay. Um, the light's not very good in here if you want to come into the bathroom. It doesn't look like it, but... I think your microphone's on, Heather. But I think, you know, you've now got cortical contact. So Brian's point is good, but I don't think it's gonna, I don't think it's gonna slide much further because you have cortical contact. No, it's yeah. a good lateral wall. I generally should use the short one at around 80, 85. Uh, good morning. Uh, first pain is the right hand down. This 14 year old girl is then to the salt of hairs to possibly humor structure uh, after a truly injury. Uh, she uh, printed she at the hospital, but then put in the office um, with uh, x rays and she was sent to the ER for a closed reduction. And she was placed into a cuff and collar and she'll trial non operative management. Was that reasonably stable, uh, Dan? Uh, yeah, I believe so. You know, it did. It was uh, like a tough uh, reduction because she was nearly like uh, four or five days out. Um, but was at the scene follow up. You know, if this uh, does stay or if it uh, translates. So what what's an acceptable amount of um, reduction in a 
14 year old it looks like he's starting to mature yeah so you know they talk about you know a range of like 45 degrees to 20 degrees of angulation um when they're older you know than uh, 12 years of age uh, but you know there she is entering that period of time where she's gonna be closing her Pisces. so she's in this kind of teenager tweener period of time so it is a bit controversial exactly how much you should accept versus how much you should do a certain point of measure for. Yeah, I think that looks fine right now, as long as it stays like that. There's an unbelievable amount of remodeling potential in that uh, in that shoulder. Uh, next page is a right hand dominant nine year old girl presents with a basketball injury uh, from about five days out. The injury with this small finger uh, P1 fracture uh, with significant um, power rotation uh, on the exam. Uh, she was taken to the operating room for a closed reduction for cutaneous pinning. Morning. The first, first patient is 56 year old, female with the history of uncontrolled diabetes. Uh, the status was full, uh, and they prior uh, with left distal tibia fracture. The patient was taken to the OR for left ankle open reduction and internal fixation. Next patient is 89 year old female, status was full with left hip uh, intertrochanteric fracture with subtrochanteric extension. The patient is taken to the OR for left uh, femur uh, IM male. Next patient is 42 year old male who, uh, at the beginning of June, uh, sustained a gunshot wound to the right femur. So he was treated surgically with right femur intramedullary nailing. Uh, he presented to emergency department complaining of the right knee pain x ray performed in the day show the failure of the distal interlocking fixation. So patient is taken to the OR, OR for revision uh, of distal fixation. The next patient is 24 year old male, status was ATD rollover, presented with left distal, non distal distal radius, radius fracture, left uh, clavicle fracture, and right proximal humerus fracture. Patients sustain multiple face fracture. For that reason, he was taken to the OR by plastics for fixations. We got the opportunity to examine these patients under anesthesia and decisions made to uh, close reduce and retain spinning of the right proximal humerus fracture. Uh, this radius was uh, skinned in sugar town spin and uh, clavicle was treated non-surgically in spin sling. Did you go back to the injury film? What was the reason why you pinned that? So when we examined him in the uh, uh, OR under sedation, we found out that there is a little uh, virus malrotation. So we wanted to see him. We wanted to uh, really just to improve a little bit. Of yeah, I can't, I can't hear you. Someone's got their um, unmute on and is running water. The reasoning behind that, the patient was under anesthesia. We examined him. We find out that there's a mild virus uh, alignment of the proximal humerus. So we improved that, put into valgus. It has tendency to go to virus. So we decided to pin that to maintain this reduction. You have basically a non fracture. So. Well, it's not a true AP. You got a true AP. You see he's actually in a fair amount of varus. And like you said, it's going to drift into some more varus. He's already in the OR. It literally took five minutes and the removable pins. I, I, I just thought it would be a good thing to do for this kid. Well, he, he should show the x-ray that shows the varus. I mean, what he's showing us doesn't looks almost not. Well, I didn't keep the floor shut. I should have kept the floor shut. But the, uh, you can see it's not a true AP. You need to get 30 degrees off of that to see a good, good look at that proximal humerus. Once we put the pins in and joysticked it, we joysticked it at least, you know, 35, 40 degrees.
Thank you. Morning. Morning. Uh, first patient, 17 year old female who fell in the Dominican Republic on vacation, uh, came directly to Robert Wood Johnson, bypassing all the hospitals from the airport <laughs> for a right electron fracture. Uh, she's taking the OR the following day for electron ORIF. Next, we have a 24 year old female who fell skateboarding with this left intertrochanteric hip fracture. Uh, she's taking the OR for a left hip. I am now. Next was a 78 year old female who uh, sustained a slip and fall through that our nursing home with a right hyperesthetic femur fracture. The prosthesis was uh, deemed to be well fixed, and she's taking the OR for a right femoral shaft, ORIF, with a locking plate for cause virus. Next was a oh, Next was a 86-year-old uh, female, similar story, <coughs> fell at her nursing home, the left periprosthetic hip fracture below a well-fixed hemiarthroplasty. Uh, she was taking the OR for a left femur ORF with locking plate and supplies wires. She had no fracture prior to that. What were those supplies wires? So she, her initial presentation, uh, Earlier this year had been for a intertrochanteric hip fracture. Uh, she was treated with a gamma nail, a short gamma nail. She then fell on that <clears throat> another time and had uh, fractured around the gamma nail. It was then revised to the cementy uh, hemiarthroplasty, which included the surplage wires. Uh, and then fell again. She's a little old demented lady who uh, doesn't follow commands and doesn't name really much. How do you assess if the prosthesis is well fixed? Is that something you do manually or is it just based on x-ray interpretation? Uh, I mean, this is cemented, uh, cemented hemi. Uh, the bone stock proximal to the fracture line uh, was actually pretty good. Um, and then intraoperatively, we can actually see the very, very tip of the cement mantle sticking out of the spiral oblique. Um, and the fracture line introp, or the, sorry, the prosthesis introp also appeared to be well fixed. So you can you can usually pull on the tip of the stem. I would never ever open up the hip to pull from the top because then you're asking for instability problems. Next is a 77 year old female uh, who's in a trip and fall with a left distal femur fracture below a uh, total hip arthroplasty. She's taking the OR for a left distal femur, I am nail or IF, nail flick combo. Next is a 79 year old male uh, who sustained this fracture in January 2020 uh, at an outside hospital, treated with this uh, uh, distal femur locking plate. Then failed that plate and was revised, sorry, I don't have images for, revised in August 2020. This uh, locking plate with a quite a bit of extra screws in there uh, failed again. I don't have those. And then we came in the office and was brought into the, the hospital for revision, uh, removal of hardware, intramedular nail, and open reduction internal fixation. Nail plate combo. So, and what combo. do you think was the problem? With those, what was the problem with those two prior fixations, Andrew, if we go back? I think this one was just way too stiff. I mean, uh, counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven you know, bicortical locking screws above the fracture. So I think both cases, not just even just the number of screws, it's just the fact that you have the working length, right? You got that one screw on both cases directly adjacent to the fracture center. Yeah. So it's just too rigid. Do you bone graft at any point here? We did put some bone graft in there for this case. Did did the they bone graft on the prior case? Uh, I don't. I, I don't know either. Uh, both cases were done at uh, different hospitals each time. Uh, next is a 62 year old female who's involved in the MVC with a left open tibial shaft fracture. Uh, she's provisionally splint washed out and provisionally splinted in the emergency room, and then taken 
for an arterial IND IM male. Next was a 32 year old male uh, visiting from Jamaica who was on a trampoline. And it's a uh, bimalleolar ankle fracture, so, uh, high Weber C. It was provisionally splinted in the emergency room and then taken following day for a uh, syndesmosis fixation. Thank you. So that is all.